Ooh, it's foggy down in Alabama at Barber Motorsports Park. We're doing the Falcon Tire Series. This is a very underrated track. It's a blast. We're doing GT4 course. And we got the LMP3s to deal with. 30 minutes, let's go. All right, here we go. Place your bets. Everyone's in a Merc. Oh, there's a Beamer up there. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Go, go, go! Not yet, go! Yes! Stay on the right. Oh! I went a little wide. Oh, he's still there. Woo! Woo! Aha, <laughs> got him. It's hard racing. Oh, shit. He's pissed. Yes! We almost died seven times, but we secured the spot. Totally worth it. Trying to win the race, turn one, you know, not a big deal. Dude, the Beamer's on a whole nother level. He's like, you guys are idiots, man. Joining in the Merc. Uh, whoa, smooth. Real smooth. <laughs> yes. Somebody hand that man a track map. He's lost. Lost and confused. You got a slow car on the left. <laughs> You're now in third. Nice, up to third. People have invisibility issues with all this fog? Uh, pretty dense fog. I can see just fine. Alright. Still there. Ah, uh, didn't have a good exit there. Oh no! Yeah, sorry about that, Jeffrey. Another I had gone off earlier and Went to the back of the pack. I had no idea anybody else was back there. That was my bad. Go, go, go. Hey, Megabyte. Thanks for the resub, Megabyte. Appreciate it. Oh, jeez. Gotta stay with this guy. your home track nice oh no kidding damn dude that's a great track i don't think i've ever raced a multi-class race here it's been a while should be interesting when the lmp3s come around Gotta 
figure out that corner a little better. That was your fastest lap of the session. The car in C1 just set the fastest lap. 28.102 It's second gear corner, right? Yeah, I caught up with them a little bit. He's off the track. Nice, nice. Ooh. What real life event just took place here? There was something. Oh man. Yeah, megabyte, yeah. IndyCar last weekend. I mean that's what I saw. Oh, I'm feeling the pressure. Damn he's good at that corner. Maybe he's using first gear. Stay on the right. Oh my god. Is this how this race is gonna be? Maybe he's using first there. I have brake drag? Maybe. I don't think so. He's using brake drag. Brakes aren't dragging. Yeah, heavy foot. Lift up my foot when I'm trying to get out of the corners. <laughs> I 
Right, because I was still trying to turn. <laughs> oh no, they're on my relative, the LMP3s. Maybe I should try to get ahead of them before they come around. Woo! I think I get inside of them there. Game. Still there, you're back in second. Clear on the right. <laughs> Man, it's a fun track. Left side. Still there, clear on the left. Oh, he followed me. <laughs> Dang, bad. they're battling for the lead right there in front of me. <sighs> hey, Sean's in third in the LMP3. now yeah I see what you're saying yeah I got stuck the brake yep I see what you're referencing now yeah probably put in a little bit more more of a dead zone. No Go get him! <laughs> Actually, I... Oh, you know what it is? I recently, uh, well, redid... Like, I'm trying not to get got in Hold on a second, I don't want to die. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Uh, I recently recalibrated my pedals with the uh, my default. I don't think I allowed. Usually, I do it in such a way where it gives me a little dead zone, but. Yeah, that's not good. I can just change the dead zone in the software. It'd probably be easier. I'm trying to trick iRacing into it. Yeah, what the hell? Not good. Slow car on the left, car stop on the left, go right. <laughs> How about that path? Right side, there's an incident behind. Clear. 
right side. Still there, hold your line. There's an incident behind. Clear. Tommy's having a race, huh? Left side, keep to the right. Still there, hold your line. Clear on the left. If we can stay in second, I'll be happy with that. Race is half over. Oh, stupid break. So are my brake lights on for him then? Uh, I just drove this car in Super Formula Lights. Was it doing it then too? Hmm. I'm like, how's he catching me so quick on the straights? <laughs> hey Casey, what's up man? Yeah, it's my Tuesday night stream. How late is it? Ah, it's only 11. Yeah, I gotta go to work tomorrow, but yeah, Tuesday nights I go a little late. Good to see you, Casey. What, no Coke tonight? Was there a Coke race tonight? Faster traffic approaching. Oh, there was. Nice. How'd you do? Mental visions in the uh, California. You know, I wonder if I could change that. Uh, I'm gonna, well, there's not many straightaways. I bet you I can go in the Ace Tech software and change that dead zone as we're racing. Clear on the right. Let me try. P four, nice man. Yeah, it's at two percent right now. I think I can change it on the fly. Change it to four, see if that works. Let me know if you see it sticking. Still is a little, huh? You calibrated it wrong. Try seven. So far, so good. 
Look at that, huh? Another reason to choose Ace Attack. Fixed it on the fly. Usually what you do when you calibrate in an iRacing is that with your pedals, you push down on the brake about as far as you want, whatever pressure you want to be 100%. And as you're releasing the brake, you want like a built-in dead zone. So you don't lift off the pedal all the way and press done. You go just about to the edge and press done because then it'll think that's 0%. We're just changing the software, it doesn't matter. Oh, really, Megabyte? Nice, man. What are you going to get? software when it comes to hubs and stuff and pedals is like yeah, like unplug the wheel and shit just for settings or like you can't be you can't change settings on the fly there's a lot of stuff like that where you can't do it but ace attack you can change anything at any time even if you're in a race or whatever Forte base and the wheel button box round wheel yeah 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 the leather round rim is my favorite hundred percent out out of all the Forte button box rims the leather round one's the best. Just because I drive Mazda and Mustang a lot. <laughs> it's the best round rim I've ever had. Cause I had old floppy for the, so many years, but that thing... It was a good rim, but... Gave me issues. And it had that LED strip on the top that always screwed me up. Physically hurt me. Hey, where's that BMW at, anyway? Oh, 13 seconds up the... Hey, I'm not gonna pit here. I faked him out! He thought I was gonna pit! Ha ha ha, nerd! Nah, he's still back there. Uh, touch portal, Megabyte. Touch portal on a Fire HD 10 tablet. A new Fire HD tablet. Oh. I just got it. That's, that was my latest upgrade for the rig. New tablet. I was using a Fire HD 8 tablet. It was slower than... It was, it was all lagging out. What do I do for button assignments when I switch rims? So there's a program... called IR Sidekick. 
So. You have to basically create a profile for each rim that you have. And once you've set it all up. And you use like IR Sidekick to help like copy and paste basically controls. Then every time, like, whatever, like, you have to know what rim you're using for each car. So, like, when I jump in the Mazda, it wants me to use the Forte button box. You know, it's set up for, for that. Uh, but the iRacing doesn't have different profiles, so what you have to do, it's really confusing to explain it. Well, for me it is. So you have your default controls. Where, because there's a little checkbox at the bottom of the screen when you're calibrating your stuff. And it says, use custom controls for this car. And if you leave that box unchecked, that's like your universal default calibration, right? But if you check that box, now it creates a file. Oh boy. Hold on, I'm racing. Clear. So if you check that box and exit iRacing, it creates a control file, f a control f configuration a file. But you can take that file and you can copy it and put it in all the, as many cars as you want or whatever. But anyway, so that's where IR Sidekick comes in. So let's say you have four rims, which I guess I do, four different rims. Is the Forte button box? I have two Forte button boxes, and it doesn't matter what rim you put on it, obviously. But uh, the computer sees the Forte button box as the same exact device. So, for instance, for Bathurst 12 Hour, I was using the Forte button box with the Comfort Plus rim, and I was worried. I didn't know how the suede material was going to act during 12 hours if it was going to start coming off in my hands or like get really matted down or become slippery or whatever right so i had the other forte button box with the leather round rim ready to go just in case and i could have literally swapped it in game with no issues and just continued on you know so the computer sees the forte button box it's identical which is fine but Let's say, you know, because I got a GSI rim, an MPI rim, Forte button box rim, and the F1 style Forte rim as well. So the way I set it up is that the, uh, my universal default controls is with this steering wheel, the F1 style rim. I calibrated everything, and then by default, every single car in iRacing will use this exact calibration with this rim, right? But let's say I load up the Toyota GR86, and I'm like, oh, I want to use the Forte button box with a round rim. Okay, that's great. So you check the box that says use custom controls for this car. You go through all the calibration. You set up all your special little buttons. You drive off track a couple times. You're set. So that's just created a new file in your documents, iRacing documents setup folder or whatever for that particular car. So IR Sidekick helps you like manage all your profiles. So like each car that you select, like, oh, I want to use custom controls for this car, custom controls for this car. Oh, fuck. Clear on the left. Clear on your left. We're wrecking. Nope, we're good. Oh, I'm wrecking. Uh, so basically, yeah, you set up, you calibrate for each rim that you have, and then you just choose that file for uh, every car that you want to use that particular configuration for. I'm not sure if there's any of this makes sense. <laughs> I can show you IR Sidekick. It's kind of a shitty program, and it's a little buggy, and 
you can't be in iRacing to use it. But it works if you're just methodical with it and know all its little quirks and features, but... Dan Suzuki, you gotta remember, Dan Suzuki's on a whole nother level, dude. He's like, oh, this doesn't work? Uh, let me just write 17 lines of custom code. Oh, there you go, it's working. Uh, what? You know? How do I make my eggs? I get a bowl, I spray it with Pam, put two eggs in it, put a little water in it, mix it all up, really good, a lot of air. Put it in the microwave for a minute 30. Take it out when there's five seconds left on the timer. I flip it over, put some salt and pepper on it, and then chop it all up, and then wait for it to cool down Bump and up. shove it in my face. You're Thanks, welcome. Man. Yeah, I put a little Pam in a bowl, in a regular bowl. Just a regular cereal bowl. You know, like Corel. That way, because the egg from the microwave will get all stuck on there. You've got about two left of fuel. Because there's a 30 second button on the microwave. Good rate, guys. Good rate, Jay. That was carry it. Good Ooh, job. good race. Very good job. And that's tough to keep it on track sometimes. Yeah, that was a good one. Thanks, Matt. To the man, man. Woof. I saw a video where a guy argued there should only be one button on a microwave, and I agree with him. The only button you need on a microwave is plus 30 second button. That's it. And he's right. I just spam it for most stuff. Except for the eggs, I know. I push it three times, that's it. But for anything else, I just spam the 30 second. And then like once I hear it sizzling or like, you know, it's bubbling, I'm like, ah, it's good. All right, turkey timeline. I was rambling the whole race. I don't even know what happened. Oh, back to touch portal. Is it easy to set up? Um, well... To be honest, I kind of feel like a hacker when I set it up. Because the way it works, if you're using any type of Android uh, device, like, uh, I think, uh, the HD5, I think it's... May I don't know if you truly have an Android device. I think it's easy, but since I'm since I've always used a, a an Amazon HD Fire tablet, which is based on Android, it could. Anyway, you have to like download the APKs of like getting the Google Play Store. So if you have a regular Android device, it already has the Google Play Store. So I think I think what I'm saying is just specific to. Um, uh, Amazon HD Fire tablets because they don't have the uh, Google Play Store on it. So you have to download the APK files and like install stuff in certain, a particular order in order to get it and then you can finally do it. This The first time I did it on my original tablet I was like, oh my god, what the hell is going on? I can't figure this out. And like trial and error of like installing and reinstalling the different APKs because you got to do it all in order and like blah, blah, blah. I, didn't, I couldn't figure it out, but then eventually I did and it worked fine. But the second time I did it, I just followed the instructions perfectly and it worked the very first time. So it wasn't that hard. Um, and then, yeah, it's touch portal and then the touch portal you get on your uh, computer um, there's like a one-time payment you can make to like unlock it, all its features, which it's just like a stream deck. I mean, to me, it's super worth it, but I find that the stream deck buttons are a little small sometimes, but they, I use both, so damn, dude, that was a hard wreck.
yeah, Megabyte. It's like, please help me. And you give them like 10, 15 bucks, I think, or whatever. And then it unlocks all the features. It's not a monthly payment. No. It's like old school. Remember like super awesome programs back in the day? They're like, please help me. And you send them $2 and they're like, you've unlocked every feature. <laughs> now it's $15 a month just to use stuff. But yeah, I like it. It's pretty cool. Works just like Stream Deck, basically. Okay, DJ. But Fire Tablets are super cheap, so, I mean, I don't know how much an Android tablet is, but I'm sure you could spend eight, nine hundred bucks. I mean, I got a beautiful, huge tablet. Uh, you know, it's massive. And it's nice, and it was like 120 bucks, you know. All right, let's take a look at those. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. wait, I got nine X, and I uh, didn't lose safety rating. Wow, 19 I rating. I'll take that. And there you have it, Falcon Tire at Barber. Uh, my hair didn't get any shorter, but neither did my safety rating. Okay.